Today, I'm going to be getting the Platinum Trophy for Horizon Zero Dawn. The game has 56 trophies included and takes an average time of 40 hours to do. The trophy list is organized around the main story and side quests, including a few collectibles you have to go out of your way for. The game begins with an opening cutscene setting up the lore of Aloy and Rost. Rost has been outcast from the tribe for probably staring at little girls too much, but they've trusted him with the care of Aloy as a way to redeem himself. So after a cute little family gathering atop a mountain like the real ones do, you get to the title screen. And I chose to play on normal difficulty because being normal nowadays is seemingly becoming a challenge. That's what I'm saying. The game takes off yet again with Aloy as a child and her first experience at being an outcast. This is kind of messed up though because she's just a child, but then again, if you saw her ass in the wild, you'd probably run also. Later on, Ross and Aloy are exploring the woods and then watches someone from the tribe just completely fails at parkour and falls into what would seemingly be his inevitable death. But since Aloy thinks she's the main character already, she decides to sneak all the way over to and save him. This is also the game's tutorial sort of thing that most have in the intro as well. Anyways, once you reach him, you tell that idiot to follow you and you have to sneak him out, which is exactly what your sister does every night to head over to your uncle's house. What do you mean by that? Anyways, once you sneak him out, you get the first trophy of the game. Aloy was still pouting though because she wants to play with the other kids. And those same other kids throw a rock right at her face. Now I wanted blood, but Ross shot my rock out of the air like a true father would. But it doesn't stop me from feeling blue balled. We then got to watch an epic training montage until Aloy is all grown up and has boobies. Bruh. Ross has one more mission or lesson to teach her, however, before she is let loose to get the college experience of the real world. Aloy must defeat a sawtooth, which is actually one of the most annoying enemies in the game. They don't have a ton of health, but lord have mercy they want to tear apart your butt just as much as Taco Bell does. So after you get done fighting it and kill it, you get the trophy for killing it. There is this contest thing that happens whenever kids of the tribe get old enough to participate in it. It's called The Proving, and I'm guessing for some reason that it's where they prove themselves. But in all honesty, it's not even that bad. It's basically just a ton of parkour with a few added in enemies trying to kill you. So it's pretty much just a normal day in the life of a tribesman. However, later on in The Proving, they didn't plan for an entire enemy clan to show up, and there is all out agony and plentiful amounts of war crimes happening everywhere around us. If you threw a darker color scheme on it and added in more blood and gunshots, I could have sworn this was just like the movie Hacksaw Ridge. We did get a trophy, however, for winning the proving, which was the most expected outcome I could have thought of. But if Aloy died, that would have also been pretty funny. The next mission, you pretty much just fight for your life against all the enemies that just showed up somehow on the mountain. And everything was going swell until this guy shows up with a machine gun, and I instantly feel for the locals when America first came over. That must have sucked. Thankfully, I stole the gun and just went to town on everybody. Aloy's mental health must be suffering right now. I've literally just killed like 30 people in cold blood. She did get put in her place though by some dude who just throat lifted her and then threw her down a mountain. So at least she won't have an ego after this. These old ladies are extremely stupid and believe in the mountain god, when in reality it's literally just old technology. And we learn a lot of lore throughout the game that makes them just look stupid. But they did save Aloy from her mountain fall and then release us into the open world finally. When you first get unleashed into the open world of Horizon Zero Dawn, they sort of just expose you to everything all at once, which I think was a movie. Anyways, you can just do the main story or do some side quests and other side activities. I sort of did a mixture of all of this, but the next trophy I got was for clearing my first corruption zone. These are areas of the map that have enemies who are corrupted by the bad stuff and they are super aggressive and usually stronger than normal enemies. Right after that, I tried to fight some enemies who were much stronger than I expected and I forgot I was only level 8 and I got my ass kicked two times in a row. A truly butthole opening experience. But I did realize I wasn't very strong, so I tried to find ways to become stronger and instead of using copious amounts of steroids, I just modified a weapon for the first time and got a trophy. I then fought some more enemies at the Kaja border fort for a mission and apparently killed 10 vulnerable machines. I don't know what makes them vulnerable, but maybe their father left them or something at a young age. Since I destroyed all those enemies, they let me into the fort and I talked to this guy who had very green looking skin and probably has a sexually transmitted disease. Anyways, after he got done yapping about nonsensical things, he gave me a trophy and that mission gave me enough XP to level 10 also. I then did some errands which are basically just side quests that don't always relate to the main story, which is why they are separated from side quests in Entirely. Anyways, while doing one, I shot off 10 components to enemies, which are the little parts that stick out of their bodies. I then completed my first bandit camp, which is just a settlement smack full of enemies, but they're all humans this time. And after you brutally take them all out, you usually have to talk to this weird dude who is the quest giver for the bandit camps. I got a trophy for the first bandit camp done, and finding my first ancient vessel, which is a collectible in this game. While traveling to the main story quest line that I finally decided to do, I stumbled upon the first tall neck in the game. These are the tallest robots out there, and 
and if you climb all the way up to the top, you can override it and they show you where everything is on the map around you. And it gives you a trophy for doing so also. Again, on the path to the main story, I ran into another thing that distracted me. The hunting trials. These are some of the hardest and most annoying things in the platinum grind. You need to get all three suns on each mission for the trophy. And this basically means you just need to do every objective very, very fast. Some are easy, but some are hard. And this one took me forever to do. But once I finally got it, there was two trophy pops for being so perfect at everything I do. Cap. <laughs> and then I ran upon my first cauldron in the game, which are these underground cave things that have info on all the different types of machines in the game. Usually enemies are everywhere inside so you can either fight them or just run past them all like a true chat. But once you reach the core and override it, you get the first cauldron trophy. Later on while I was doing some other quests, I got 30 headshots on humans, which is definitely a feat most tri people probably did achieve in their time. For the past like hour and a half, I have been doing this alternate main quest line, and it had us just go around and kill a ton of cultist people and machines. But once the tribe people were satisfied with the amounts of bloodshed I just did, I got a trophy. And finally, I found my way back to the main quest line where I was heading to Meridian, a city that is apparently miles upon miles away. On my way once more, I got a trophy for killing machines, and finally I made it to Meridian, which is basically the place where you get almost every single one of your main story missions throughout the game. And it is in fact where the final part of the game takes place. This dude with a goofy eye haircut has a thing for Aloy and sort of hits on her all game, but he's the leader of the Meridian army so we can't really turn him down because being on his bad side wouldn't be smart. Anyways, he has us investigate some dude's apartment which is kind of sus, and I'm glad they didn't have black lights back then because I wonder how many fluids would have been on that bed. Hey, yo. We did find out though that the guy's apartment we just ransacked is being forced to work for the enemy so his whole family doesn't die. So he gets let off this one time. We then go chase down that man in his cultist excavation sites and we find out that they are controlling the machines. Also, Aloy gets introduced to this hacker guy who gives us a ton of missions and guidance along the way as well. But enough talk because we then get to fight a ton of enemies and after nearly dying, we confronted the evil man we chased down and interrogate the living balls out of the poor dude. At the end of it, however, you are forced to make a choice on what to do with his life. I chose to save the guy because it really wasn't his fault, and I already feel bad after killing hundreds of people so far in this game. Also, major shout out to Aloy's arm physique that is very succulent. Later on, we had this mission in the winter biome where we had to infiltrate this camp that was yet again full of enemies and machines. Sadly, I died and the game ended. Just kidding, I respawned because Aoi has plot armor. However, this was the hardest combat section yet of the game, and there is a boss fight sort of thing at the end of it once all the machines are dead. But once you beat the evil man and loot him, Aloy finds the forbidden AirPod Pros and slaps them on since these people have been using sound waves to torture innocents. We find the girl we have been after who also happens to be related to the weird haircut dude, but I feel bad because even if she isn't dead, she definitely has irreversible hearing damage. Oh, and I guess she uh, did die, so uh, rest in peace. But the story must go on and we get back to Meridian only to find it under assault from the cultist enemies. We even got to fight these flying machine bird looking things, which really made me question how bad I am at aiming a bow in video games. But after eliminating all the enemy foes, the weird haircut guy nearly smashes the enemy leader's head in like a pumpkin. But he finds self-control since he is sober at the moment and gives us a trophy for helping him find peace within. I got another trophy after that for finding my first metal flower, which is another collectible in the game. And we then got to do this mission which really opened our eyes into the story's lore and what is actually happening, or more of what happened already to the world to begin with. Aloy opens up one of those metal vault doors, and it's actually just an entrance to a corporate headquarter that made the machines forever ago. We climb around for a while until we reach the roof and can simulate a business meeting between Aloy's sort of clone person that made her, kind of? I don't know, it's kind of weird. But these two people talk about how they accidentally made an entire species of lethal machines that can multiply and feed off of living things, essentially telling us how the entire world got wiped out. And we got a trophy right after that. I then got trophies for killing 10 enemies with stealth, completing another main quest, reaching level 25, and another main quest trophy. This leads us into a main quest line where Aloy is trapped in a cage by the enemy man. However, like most evil warlords, they struggle to get it up at night, so to find some excitement in his life, he threw Aloy into a huge coliseum fight with the machines. And honestly, this wasn't very hard at all, but after fighting a ton of enemies, that dude who had been helping us out shows up and rescues us even though I was doing just fine on my own. The next main quest line shows us that Aloy was made in a literal machine because that was one of the last scientific breakthroughs of the old world. They can manufacture babies now. Good lord, it's probably good they all died. Anyways, the old ladies from the beginning can't believe their eyes, and Aloy yells at them for being dumb. And we get a trophy. On the next main quest line, Aloy explores another old world building and finds the Master Override component, which can basically just control anything in the game, and even Hades, which is the corrupted machine's leader. She then puts it onto her spear, and we got a trophy. There is sort of one missable trophy in the game. It's called All Allies Join. 
and it requires you to complete a specific set of quests before doing the final mission of the game. So I just went off and did all of those, which yielded me some trophies while doing them. But once that was done, I then started the final mission for the game, Looming Shadow. And you get the All Allies Join Trophy Pop as soon as you go to sleep and prepare for the battle ahead of you. This final mission is basically just an all-out assault on Meridian with heaping amounts of giant enemies. But they do give you a lot of overpowered weapons to use, so it isn't very challenging to begin with. The final boss fight, however, is actually quite hard for the first time you do it. I ended up struggling a lot on it and didn't die once, but it took me forever to beat and I almost didn't do it in time. The best way to beat it is just focus solely on shooting off all the components and doing nothing else besides that. Also, make sure you have highly upgraded weapons because I didn't and it, I was doing like zero damage, which kind of sucked. Once the thing was beaten, there was then a ton of cutscenes and the game ended giving us the trophy for completion. The cleanup stage for Horizon Zero Dawn's Platinum Trophy isn't actually as bad as you'd expect. Nearly everything you need to do is just on the map and it's a matter of just going and finishing the objectives. The first thing I went after was all the tall necks, which made the entire map visible as well, which is an added benefit. I then went after some other tasks, but on the way, got three strikes from above, which is a special combat skill you need to unlock and use three times. I then overrode all the cores in the cauldrons around the map, and mistakenly bought every single Frozen Wild skill, which isn't even a part of the main game or trophy list. And this right here was a giant mistake, because it caused me to have to grind skills for a lot longer than I needed to since it was a DLC edition. That trophy didn't even count for the Platinum, and honestly, ruined my time a bit because it set me back by hours. But I did get two trophies after it for overriding machines and tearing off more components. I then finally finished all the hunting grounds and got 100% completion on them for two more trophies, which was honestly one of the hardest things in the game. Next I got two trophies for clearing out all corruption zones and in turn all bandit camps also. And now it is time to sort of go for some collectibles because I don't have many other tasks left. The first one I got was for knocking down all 23 training dummies around Nora. These are scattered around campfires typically and aren't too hard to spot since they are kind of huge. Next I cataloged all the machines in the game, which is just done by focusing on them with the focus. And I found my first vantage point collectible. 20 minutes later, I ended up finding all the vantage point collectibles for that trophy. I then went back to replay the last mission of the game over and over. Because if you remember, I accidentally spent all my skill points on the wrong skill tree and needed to get that back so I could unlock the other one in entirety. So if you're going for the platinum, make sure to do the other skill tree first or else you'll end up like me having to replay this mission for hours on end. Thankfully, every time you play it, it gives you two skill points and a ton of XP, so it wasn't horrible, but I ended up replaying it a total of five Five times if I remember correctly. Anyways, I got the level 50 trophy and then all the skill trophy also. And now all I had left to do was get the special armor thing, which was sort of a collectible, and then just go get all the actual collectibles in addition. And after that, I got the platinum trophy pop. Horizon Zero Dawn was a super fun game in terms of gameplay, and I enjoyed it a lot, but the voice acting and the way they did dialogue was sort of cringe and kind of weird in my opinion, so on every single side quest and some main quests, I pretty much just skipped through it all, because it didn't really add much to the story anyway. So here's my time spent on the game and it in my library. Thanks for watching, if you want to see me do the sequel of this game on the hardest difficulty, then get this video to 4,444 likes.